How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and welcome back to our Terraria 1.3 Expert Mode Let's Play. So in the last episode we defeated both the Frost and a Pumpkin Moons. And well when I say defeated we got all the trophies and they're surprisingly common in Expert Mode but uh, we got them which is cool. And what I would like to do now is to start making the preparations for the uh, Moon Lord and the Lunar Events. However, first, one little thing I want to do, and a few of you have said it in the comments, I want to put our scurvy dog's chest by the beach and put some money around it. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a cool idea when some of you said it. I'm like, how sweet is that? <laughs> Such a little thing and so cool at the same time. Scurvy dogs! <laughs> there we go. Alright, so what I'd like to do first is reforge our op, the goblins in the- Oh, actually, mm -mm, bit of romance. <laughs> I think it's hinted at in the game that the mechanic and the goblin tinkerer like each other. Okay, so we've got seven platinum left. Um, let's see if we can get some good modifiers on this. I assume it's unreal on the chain gun. Unreal? Okay, intimidating, no. So again, I'm just looking at the gold price, guys. Well, Godly will probably do for now. Um, that's pretty nice damage. So we've got a, we've got 600 Clarified Bullets left over. Might need some more. Now, one important thing I would like to get for the Moon Lord fight, and it's recently been buffed, is the Frozen Turtle Shell. Now, a little bit of history on that item. It's a, uh, it used to, when you dropped below 25% health, it used to give you like a 25 uh, defense boost, so just a flat 25 points, something like that. Don't quote me, it's, it's, it was roughly that. Um, since 1.3, it's actually a lot stronger. So when you drop below 50% health now, it actually gives you a 25% damage reduction, which is totally insane. I'm just saying if I can Discord. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> Blind Discords, guys, for the win. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Uh, blah, 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 blah. So you drop below 50 health, 50% 50 health, which is going to happen versus the Moon Lord, and you get 25% damage reduction. That's kind of cool. And to be honest, I don't see how you wouldn't use it now. Like, it's 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 up there. I mean, everyone loves Worm Scarf and it only does 17%, but that's a flat, like it's always on sort of thing. So, so what we're doing is we're just trying... Ooh, an Amarok. We're trying to get down to find frozen turtles. Now, I'm not sure if they're... I haven't really hunted them before. Um, they could be... I don't think they're a surface mob. So we're just going to drop down a bit. I think if I can get to the under... Uh, the cavern layer. Cavern? Yep. When you start to see souls drop is generally when the uh, rarer mobs will spawn. Don't quote me, they could be surface, but I'm pretty sure they're underground mobs, so yeah. Um, now, Frozen Turtle Shell has a very lovely... Ah, oh, there we go, Soul of Night, beautiful. So what we can do now is, like I do with my Mimic Farms guys, is start to open up a space here, and then flatten out a spawning platform. And what that does, guys, and it, it's surprising how much it boosts spawn rates, is boost spawn rates. <laughs> um... But yeah, what, what you get effectively is a nice, nice even spot where lots of mobs can spawn and it'll, it'll speed up any farming that you're trying to do by quite a large degree. So definitely worth it. Uh, can I just say, I just want to comment on, I love the little touches, like if you get uh, in water in an ice biome, you get the chill debuff. It's pretty annoying, but it's kind of cool at the same time, like it's a nice little effect. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so as you can see from the mini-map, this is starting to open up, which it's just a matter of time before we start to get all those beautiful mobs starting to spawn. So as always, I'll speed this up and I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so we've set up a nice little area here and I've got a bit of a catwalk along the top and yeah, I've sort of smoothed out down below as much as possible. It's actually going to be a fair bit of work to make a full farm here, but I don't think it'll be necessary. They have a 1% chance, I'm pretty sure, of dropping their, um, their shells. So it's not like we need an ultra high efficient uh, farm. We just need a nice open space that, um, yeah, we can sort of fly around in and, um, yeah, pick up stuff as we're going. One thing I really love about uh, making a farm too, guys, is that, you know, it gives you something to do while you're, while you're waiting for the drop. Like, you know, otherwise, if you just, like, run around farming non-stop, like, it can get boring really fast. So, if you give yourself a little project, you're like, alright, I'll make a little catwalk for turtles to spawn on, at least you've got something to do. And then, if they spawn, you know, you might get the drop while you're waiting, which is awesome. And if you don't, that's okay too, because at least you've kept yourself entertained for, you know, 10, 20 minutes while you're, um, while you're waiting. So, yeah, so all I need to do is keep flying around. Uh, I might tweak it a bit more. Doesn't look like there's much spawning up the top here. So I might dig out a bit of the top so they spawn more along this platform here. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you when we finally get our turtle shell. And we have got it. And it's got warding too, which is pretty nice. And it was kind of fun, like I've just kept... You know, as I said, I, it's good to make a farm while you're trying to get something. Um, it gives you something to do, which is the big thing. I was just setting up extra rows of um, ice platforms for mobs to spawn on. I put a table down, we got a water candle. I was starting to put up... Um, <laughs> uh, the banners, which is kind of cool, but yeah, I, I think the main thing is to, you know, keep yourself entertained while you're grinding for something. It makes it a bit more enjoyable, and uh, yeah, but now we've got this, uh, we can move on. So, let's pick up our water candle, because I don't want to waste them, and yeah, let's go back to base. Alrighty, next thing on the list in our preparation for our Moon Lord battle is that I would like to... I would like to fight the Martian invasion another one or two times. Uh, we need some more conduit plating to enhance our arena because we're definitely going to have to expand it for the Moon Lord. I can't just tank in the box. I'm going to get destroyed if I do that. Um, so to do that, we're going to need to fight some Martians. And a really cool trick for doing this is to fly up to space and use an ice, ice rod and then we can start building a little platform and basically all I'm going to do is set up a um, little water candle and then just chill up here for a bit and wait for a saucer to spawn the cool thing about doing it up here is that you only have to contend with harpies um, and there's less mobs that will interfere with uh, spawning the Martian probe Another cool thing is too that, um, say you're on the ground and a slime spawns underneath um, and you don't notice it, it'll actually, you know, lower the chances of different mobs spawning. Now, I think one thing I've done incorrect here is I've built it above my current spawn point, which seems to be interfering with the spawn rates. So what we might do... Oh no! Hi Wyvern! <laughs> I was just wondering, where's all the harpies? Okay, maybe it was just a bizarre... A bizarre lack of spawns for a, a second or two there. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Anyway, so... <laughs> Careful what you wish for, huh, guys? <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, the reason I'm not going to use summons up here is... I can't remember if they auto-target Martian probes. And I'd rather not find out the hard way, so I'm just going to fight them manually. Um, obviously, you guys don't need to hang around and watch me fly around this little ice platform for however long it's going to take. So, I'll see you on the other side.
And we found the Martian probe. Woohoo! And it took a while, but uh, we finally did it. So it's it's go time, people. Oh, and a saucer spawned straight away. So what I'm going to do is not actually kill the mobs below. I just want to focus on the saucer. So I'm going to hide in my box <laughs> and hopefully not die. And oh, uh, oh, oh, out, out, out. Okay, that may not work as well as I thought. Okay, so I just have to, when it uses that, when it uses that bomb attack, I just need to try and avoid that. But, uh, yeah, that looks like it's going to work okay. So, if my, if this box was a bit taller, that would work awesome. Uh, let's see if I can get some bubbles getting in on it. Yep, beautiful. And have I got, oh, whoops. Let's see. I might sub my wings out for this. I don't really need those for this fight. And uh, yeah, this looks like it'll work okay. So I just really want to farm the sources at the moment for this. Um, try and get the trophy, which would be nice. And uh, yeah, all those awesome loots that drop from the Martian saucer. And I'm nice and safe in my little box here. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm relatively safe in my little box here, but not invincible. Okay. Come on, Sharknadoes, you can do it. Okay, let's see if I can safely get some bubbles out here. Is that working? Yeah, that's working. Cool, cool, cool. No, Sharknado, stay up the top. I'll resummon them back up here. Because I only want to kill the sources. Considering how rare the Martian probes are, um, I don't want to be using up the percentage just killing random things. So just watching its health, I don't want uh, the items to fall in the lava. Uh, it's not usually an issue, but because this moves so wide. There we go. Oh, a cosmic car key, sweet. It's pretty cool. So, the Martian invasion is finished, and we got some cool items. Unfortunately, we didn't get the trophy, and I realized that I probably could have, would have got more conduit plating if I'd focused on the smaller mobs, but, you know, I wanted trophy, but we didn't get one, but what can you do? Anyway, we are back in the scene of the best arena ever built in Terraria, if you recall our Queen Bee fight from like the third episode, I think it was. And I'm just here to pick up some honey because what we're actually going to start crafting is an extension to fight the Moon Lord to this arena. And I'm actually going to use the bubble trick that everyone's talking about. I don't personally like it just for... Gosh, I really need to update these houses. Goodness me. I don't like the bubble trick so much for your character to run through because it slows you down too much. But, and just hold that thought, I might sell some of the extra stuff here. Uh, I only need one cosmic car key. I'll keep one of the other items. Um, that's, <laughs> I don't need that many souls, I don't need the feathers. Uh, yeah, 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 beautiful. Okay, um, yeah, but using the bubble trick with Fishron actually speeds you up rapidly. Um, so what I've thought is I'll make some I'll make some ice bricks to go with uh, the conduit plating because they look similar-ish. Uh, so that'll that'll kind of work with the aesthetics that we're going for. So let's make some of those, and we've got conduit. So what I'm envisioning is 
even with the frozen turtle shell, I don't believe we're going to be able to tank enough damage. So what I want to add to this arena is sort of like a top layer here. And it's going to be in like an overly U shape. And what that'll do is give me room to move around a bit. And I want to use the bubbles to create like a little racetrack for the fish run. And that way we can sort of zoom back and forward and hopefully... It's like when I use that teleporter trick. Hopefully if we just keep moving we should be able to avoid a lot of the Moon Lord's lasers. That's the theory guys. <laughs> That's the theory. Um, you know, I... I don't test things before I do them in uh, my playthroughs. I just go, yep, that sounds pretty cool. Let's give that a shot. So, you know, so you're seeing it here first. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's make some... Oh, do I have spare Martian stuff in the box? Barely any. Okay. <laughs> so let's make one platform here. And then let's do the same thing along here. And yeah, what I was thinking is if I put the bubble blocks like... I'll do them... <laughs> what are you doing, Happy? Crazy Happy. Okay. So like that, I'll put one handy in there. And then if I'm fighting the Moon Lord, I'm just like, wow! And if I fly through that, you can see that the Fisheron gets the massive speed boost. Which should, should allow us to keep moving nice and fast. Hopefully not too fast. And, uh, yeah, hopefully keep ourselves out of trouble. So what I want to do is put a jellyfish in each one. Actually, did I have four jellyfish statues? I'm pretty sure I had a lot of something just then. That is insane. Wow. Well, I may as well set up more of them. Uh, let's make it... Let's make it jelly time here, people. Not peanut butter jelly time, but just jelly time in general. So let's put two jellyfish statues in. Gosh, I can't believe how many jellyfish. Oh my god. And you look, if I was trying to find a jellyfish statue in my playthrough, do you think I would get one? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, let's move up our heart statue. And this way we can wire everything together. And this isn't going to be symmetrical, guys, but... Oh, actually it kind of is, because I'll put the timer there. Beautiful. Alright, so what I want to do... Is I'll put a spiky ball here. Spiky ball there. This, this should work. I have faith in it. Alright. So, running... That one there this one through here and what should happen is all right so while I'm fighting yeah good a heart drops from that beautiful so while I'm fighting the moon lord the jellyfish will be consistently spawning and yes dropping glow sticks and all that stuff ideally it would have been what mobs would have been better maybe skeletons or something but they're dropping hearts, so if I can fish up some life force potions, that should be pretty useful. Alrighty, thanks as always for watching another episode of our Expert Mode Let's Play. I have a feeling that next episode may be the thrilling conclusion of the series. We are so ready to fight the Lunatic Cultist and move on to the Moon Lord. Our arena's ready, but will we survive? And what equipment do we need to get? I mean, I pretty much want to get the Solar Eruption and maybe pick up a Stardust Dragon. So I think the order that we fight the Pillars in is going to be super important if we want to try and kill the Moon Lord on our first run. But uh, we'll see how we go anyway. So leave your comments. Let me know what your advice is for our lead up to the Moon Lord battle. All right, it's time for some shout outs as always. And our first one is from Gecko Manda. And they've asked me to say, I am Barack Obama, and I approve this message. <laughs> nice one, Gecko. Uh, our next one is from Jacob Clark, and they've asked me, oh, good old classic movie quote. They've asked me to say, I'll be back. And we, that, we know that's from our favorite, The Terminator. Nice one, Jacob. 
Our next one is from Will Smith. And they've asked me... Will S, actually. I don't know why I said Smith. <laughs> I guess because he's a famous actor, maybe. Um, and he's asked me saying in Ash Ketchum voice, <laughs> happy I choose you. And, oh my gosh, happy... Uh, Ash has got such a... Such a... Oh, it's a tough voice. <sighs> I'll try. <laughs> this is not going to be good. I know, I know already, uh, but I will still try. Happy, I choose you. Oh my gosh! Ouch. <laughs> Thanks, Will. That was awesome. Our next one is from that cow is a spy, and they've asked me to say in Princess Peach's voice, "Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I beg some cookies for you." That's nice. She doesn't need rescuing for once, and is actually just giving Mario something nice. Good on you, Princess Peach. And our next one is from Yuka Porta. And they've asked me to say, hello, hello, come and get your cookies. Nice one, Yuka. Thanks for that. And our last one is from John and Jimmy, 7210. And they've asked me to say in a Darth Vader voice. <laughs> I always start laughing when I try and do this one. <laughs> come to the dark side. We, are <laughs> we have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh no <laughs> thanks for that one John and Jimmy um, alright guys leave a like if you enjoyed this episode and keep those comments coming what do you recommend for our thrilling conclusion to our expert mode let's play with our moon lord battle what do we need what should we get it's gonna happen so yeah I, I'd love to have your advice and tips if you haven't subscribed yet click that little HC icon in the bottom right corner you won't be disappointed and to all those people wanting the next update to our Ultimate World, I've just about finished the wiring, so it'll be out tomorrow with a community update video, which will be awesome. I've got some great news for all of you. All right, until next time, you will stay happy, and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Day, signing out. See ya. And that means that Ectoplasm will be, yeah, getting farmed nicely. And you can see that was dead easy to set up that. So the mobs can cruise up the sides, the mimics can get in which is one of the main things. Yeah, we've got lots of good loot. It's just, oh he's got 3,000 health! He's only got 3,000!